All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to discuss three pitfalls when applying or using L'Hopital's rule. Because L'Hopital's rule, you'll see it's very exciting, but also very addicting. And it's very easy to get carried away with that. For instance, let's calculate the limit as x goes to zero of x plus cosine of x over x plus uh, sine of x plus 1. And let's see if there's a mistake in the following proof or not. Well, if we apply L'Hopital's rule, you get limit x goes to 0 of 1 minus sine of x, and then 1 plus cosine of x, and this you just plug in, 1 minus 0 over 1 plus 1, so the limit should be 1 half. Well, it turns out the limit is not 1 half because I'm sure a lot of people will forget to check whether it's indeterminate. And in fact, let's see, here what we get is, it's actually 0 plus 1 over 0 plus 0 plus 1 which is one. So not indeterminate at all. And in particular, we cannot even apply L'Hopital's rule here. L'Hopital's rule only works for zero over zero or infinity over infinity. So that was the first problem. Let me just check, yes. And now let's deal with the second pitfall. which is as follows. I know my whiteboard is getting very messy now. Um, how about the limit as x goes to infinity of square root of x squared plus 1 over x? And you'll see, it's one of my favorite problems. So this is of the form infinity over infinity, which means we can apply L'Hopital's rule and this becomes the limit as x goes to infinity of the derivative of the numerator. So just use the chain rule or chain rule to figure this out. Derivative of square root, which is 1 over 2 square root. Derivative of x squared, which is 2x, divided by the derivative of x, which is 1. This cancels out, and you get the limit as x goes to infinity of x over square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, weird, we get something of the same form, but let's persevere. So this is still of the form infinity over infinity, so let's just apply L'Hopital's rule again. So it's limit x goes to infinity of 1 over 1 over 2 square root of x squared plus 1 times the derivative of this, which is 2x. So the twos cancel out, and we get limit as x goes to infinity of square root of x squared plus 1 over x. Oh my god, if you apply L'Hopital's rule, you eventually get the same limit. So please don't do it again, that would just be insane. And in particular, this shows you L'Hopital's rule doesn't work here. And we would have to resort to other techniques. By the way, I did a video similar to that on, uh, before, and a lot of people claim, well, you can just say the limit here is just 1 over the limit, so the limit squared is 1, and because this is positive, the limit is 1. I'm sorry, but that's not true, because that just assumes the limit exists. We don't even know if it exists. And that's why let's now show independently both that the limit exists and that it is 1. So that's very standard. If you have a square root, you just factor out x squared from the square root. So square root of x squared, 1 plus 1 over x squared, and then over x. And now remember, square root of x squared in general, it's absolute value of x, but since x is positive, that's just x. And so what we're left with is the limit as x goes to infinity 
of x times square root of 1 plus 1 over x squared over x. This cancels out, and we get square root of 1 plus 0, which is just 1. So the limit in the end is 1. So again, don't get addicted to L'Hopital's rule. Think also of the other limit techniques that we have. Another one, and I've heard this a lot before, is the following one. Here's a proof, under quotation mark, that sine of x over x goes to 1. Well, this is of the form 0 over 0, so let's L'Hopital it. Let's limit x goes to 0 of cosine of x over 1. And that's just cosine of 0, which is 1. The question is, is there a mistake in the proof? And this is kind of interesting because there's no mistake in the steps. So the steps pretty much are legit. But if you remember limits and derivatives, the problem is in order to show that the derivative of sine is cosine, you actually need that limit to be one. So this limit is a key ingredient to showing that the derivative of sine is cosine. So in that process, you're not allowed to use that sine prime is cosine because that would be circular reasoning in math. In order to show something, you cannot assume what you want to show. In particular, if you have this limit, you show that sine prime is cosine, but if you do it this way, you assume sine prime is cosine, and that's a big no-no. So, strictly speaking, nothing wrong with this proof, but mathematically speaking, it's wrong. Because, um, again, to show this is one, to show that sine prime is cosine, we need that limit to be one. All right, so I hope you like this little pitfalls of L'Hopital's rule. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.